Okay, Ryan. Who's the best? Emma. Who's your favorite? Yeah. Good job. Okay, let's get started. <laughs> What's going on guys? We are back with some more RLCS predictions as well as some Giblet predictions when he decides to do them. We'll go over that in a little bit, but let's get into week two. We'll recap week one quickly. We're not going to make this a super long thing because, you know, time is money, right? Time is money for you guys. Time is money for me because I'm flying out today. Kind of run out of time this week. It's been a very busy week, but anyway, let's get into it. So first, the stand-ins from the week. I was 4-1 and one in North America pretty simple week to pick in north america and give it one three and two twitter also in four and one I mean give it both two and three in europe my downsides was of course mouse sports and i think i got one other oh i got psg complexity wrong and then giblet he actually got one of the mouse sports right but he missed out on the flip side game and twitter doing a good job three and two they picked weedem girls correctly obviously got the mouse sports games wrong just like everyone else so here we are Twitter, you're seven and three. I'm six and four. Giblet is five and five. Maybe it is better to just pick the odds on favorite every single time. Looks like it's working for Twitter. Uh, let's get into it though. Let's go into next week. Uh, for this week, at least week one, we'll do a quick recap. Really cool to watch. Mouse Sports showing up. Allegiance, big win over FlyQuest. I still think FlyQuest is the better team there, but Allegiance, that's a huge win for them to have a shot to move into playoff territory, into world championship territory. So huge ups. For Allegiance, they kind of fell short later, and obviously the big three in NA is still the big three right now. It, it's looking like th uh, this week should be interesting, and we'll get into that in a bit for the big three purposes. Uh, Europe side, we knew games were going to be close. I felt like some of them were a little too defensive, maybe a slightly boring to an extent, but teams are going to play safe. It makes sense. Uh, it reminds you of like New Jersey Devil uh, hockey, basically, um, where everything's really defensive, and you just wait for that one moment. We'll see if the offense kind of peaks a little bit more as the season goes on. I assume Europe will get a little bit more offensive heavy uh, by the end of it. But it was uh, there was two series in particular. It was the PSG complexity and then the um, – what was the other one? There was one other one that was very defensive. I'm losing track of my mind. But we're going to continue on. We're just going to go into it. So going into North America, let's get into it. I've done it a little differently. I put them in match order so it's less confusing. And then I just wrote down their hype. One is the most. Like, one is, like, the most hype. Five is the least hype. And this is how we're going to go through the rest of the season. So, Cloud9 versus Ghost Gaming. I put this one as a four because Ghost Gaming didn't really look that good. Uh, speaking of boring series, that series was relatively boring. Ghost Gaming versus EG. Um, besides Chicago being that, like, limelight, no one else on either team really showed up all that much. So... Cloud9 versus Ghost. Th uh, this is a good test for Cloud9 this week. They have a doubleheader this week. They play both Ghost and EG. So they will play all three of the new rosters in NA in the first two weeks. Like, if they come out 3-0, they're basically guaranteed top three. At least. And then, obviously, if you finish top two, you're going to the World Championship. Unless they really fall apart at the end, probably guaranteed top three. I think Cloud9 is going to handle Ghost pretty easily. But I just want to see more from Ghost. Very similar to, like, I just want to see more from these rosters, like Ghost, Rogue, and EG. I just want to see more from them. I want to see if they can compete versus the big three. And I still think that it's going to be very difficult versus Cloud9 and NRG. But G2, that might be the one stepping stone where people can kind of climb up a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to go Cloud9 here. And we're going to go to Giblet with his prediction. Okay, we need Cloud9 versus Ghost, Ryan. <laughs> Which one? Who's going to win? Cloud9 versus Ghost. Who's going to win? Which one? That one? Cloud9? Yay! Cloud9 wins. Okay. Good job. All right. Kind of rigged there just a little bit, I think. But Giblet went with C9. We're going to call for that. And we'll get into why it was very difficult to pick for Giblet in a little bit. Uh, but let's get into this next one. Allegis versus Energy. This is my least hype match up of the week. It's Energy. They should be very dominant. Allegiance looked miserable versus G2. We'll see if they can pick up their form like they had versus FlyQuest. But I think if they give Energy time at all, Energy is going to destroy them. Very similar to what G2 did in a very similar set. So I got Energy here easily. I keep trying to hit Shift when I have Caps Lock on. But Energy for me... And uh, let's go over to Giblet. And Giblet had uh, some thoughts about this match. 
Next up, Allegiance versus NRG. No, oh, you gotta stay on the couch, Ryan. Uh oh, you're leaving. Come on, let's go. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay, Ryan, now you can see yourself, okay? Can you see yourself? Say hi. Alright, Ryan, Allegiance versus NRG. Who wins? Which one? Which one, Ryan? Look at that girl. Yeah. Which one? Allegiance or energy? Which one? <laughs> Ryan, which one? Ryan, which one? Ryan, which one? Can you pick one? Can you pick one? Which one? Allegiance or energy, Ryan? Ryan, which one? Allegiance or energy? What, you want this one? Which one? You can't give me both. Which one? Allegiance or energy? You just crumpled up allegiance. Which one? Can I have one? Well, I don't think either one's winning today. So, Giblet wasn't a fan of either of these teams. And, um, yeah, he was not a fan of predictions at all this week. We'll get into that one more time before, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it in a bit. But, uh, Giblet, no pick for him. So, uh, I got energy. Giblet is none. And again, Twitter polls will be done. I guess I'm going to record this video right after this video. I'll put up the Twitter thread with all the different polls for all the matches. And then I will link it in the description below. But let's move on. FlyQuest versus G2. This is a pretty hype matchup in my mind because I think FlyQuest, they look decent versus NRG. That is the FlyQuest I expect to see versus the top teams where, like, they have a shot. They definitely have a shot to contend versus the top teams. I don't think they're going to win a majority of them, but they could win one of them. And I think it's going to be this one. I think FlyQuest is going to take this. G2 had it easy on easy street last week versus Allegiance. Of course, Allegiance beat FlyQuest, but it's a different matchup. It's a different style. Maybe FlyQuest comes out in surprise. Maybe I'm only picking FlyQuest because G2 needs the win. Who knows? Who knows? But why not? I'm going to have a little fun here. I'm going to go FlyQuest on this pick. If FlyQuest plays like they did against Energy, they have a chance. G2 hasn't been tested at all yet. R uh, Rizzo didn't have to do anything in the last game. He's going to have to do more in this game, obviously. But that's not a fault to him. It was just Allegiance was kind of easy. We'll see how G2 plays. I think this is the first time we'll see the real G2. And uh, I'm going to go FlyQuest. I think this is their one upset throughout this. I think FlyQuest will take it. And they need it. They're 0-2. We'll see if they can bounce back. But I got FlyQuest here. Let's go over to Giblet. And uh, we'll see what he thinks of this matchup. Maybe one more time. Maybe he'll get one in this time. I don't know. Ryan, can I have one? FlyQuest or G2? Hey. No, don't throw them. <laughs> can Daddy have one? Hey. Uh -oh. Can I have one? All right, Ryan, can you pick one for me? Okay, uh, I think Giblet, uh, he didn't pick Energy or Allegiance. He just ran away with them. And I think he thinks FlyQuest and G2 are both trash. He just throwing them over the step. And uh, I don't think he uh, respects either of these teams right now. So Giblet chooses trash over picking FlyQuest and G2. And that'll be the last time we look into Giblet's picks for the week. He did not want to cooperate this week, which is fine. Um, we'll have some bonus content at the end of the video, if you want to see that, uh, for when he gets to see himself on camera. And once he saw that, it was all over. There was no more predictions at that point. So, moving on to the next match, Rogue versus Ghost Game. And I have this one as hype level number two, because it's a very close game where we need to see something from one of these teams. That's what I've been talking about with all of these new rosters. We really haven't seen them play well yet. Um... Rogue versus Ghost Gaming. This could decide a top six spot. Like, at this moment, the only positive that came out of Rogue playing last week was that they didn't play twice. They looked miserable. Like, double commits from every single player. It wasn't only Joro. It wasn't only... It was all three. 
Jacob too. Miserable. Just miserable performance. They need to play better. After all their talk about, we're super excited for the season. We're ready to grind. We're ready to do it. And they put on that showing. That showing in week number one, that was miserable. Luckily for them, they played C9, which they would probably lose to even when they're playing near their best. So maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. Rogue and Ghost both have some kinks to work out. And the one good thing for Ghost, I think, in this matchup that I might tip my cap towards them is that they play earlier. They play Cloud9. We'll see if that can get them ramped up for this series. I think this one could be close. I just can't pick Rogue after last week. I think Rogue is better than that, but I need to see it first before I pick him. So I'm going to go Ghost here. And uh, Giblet, he doesn't have a trash pick here. Probably d deserves the trash pick here uh, for what they did in week number one. But he will not do it. He will not do it. No picks for Giblet here. And then Cloud9 versus EG. My most hyped matchup because EG is supposed to be that top four again. Potentially better because Chicago is... A better addition just on paper than Chrome, but they haven't looked like the EG of last season. Maybe they overperformed. We've said that a lot about Classics. Every single season, it seems like his teams overperform. At some point, it's just performance, but we'll see if EG can really test C9 here uh, because I just want to see a really good matchup, and I want to see one of the big three tested, even though G2 will probably get tested. But I honestly want to see C9 or Energy tested because I think those two are leaps and bounds better than everyone right now and they might run away with this and easily lock up a world championship bid i want to see c9 tested i just don't see it though i think c9 is too strong uh the one thing that's scary for both eg and ghost when they play cloud nine they played last week very defensive series it's very hard to keep cloud nine like off the scoreboard so they're gonna have to find their offense uh this week Chicago was the only, like, really good offense, I felt like, for EG. A corrupted G scored on his opportunities. He shot 66%, but he only had two goals on three shots. So, there needs to be more opportunities. And uh, we'll see what Classics does this week. I thought he was relatively quiet last week. If he can pressure C9, maybe something happens uh, with it. But I think C9 is too good right now, and I got C9 relatively easily as well here. But it's still my most hyped matchup because upset potential. Upset potential here. And Giblet, no picks for him. Again, we'll have bonus content later. Again, for Twitter, polls will be in the description below. Let's move over to Europe. So, here we go. Europe, every game is always, like, really exciting because they're, it could go either way. I feel like NA right now, lately, it's been, like, the big three are just dominant. And we'll see with the FlyQuest pick. Who knows if it'll work. But, uh, let's see. Flipside versus PSG. Like, every game here is going to be really close. And now with Mouse... Like, the only team I thought might have been a little bit boring was Mouse Sports, and then they go 2-0 last week. So, hey, it's Europe. I love Europe. Happy Europe Day to those celebrating on Sunday because we're all celebrating on Sunday. But flip side versus PSG. Both teams come in with a loss. Both teams, very slow defensive series for the most part. Someone's got to step up. This is my third most hype matchup just because there's a lot of close games in this one and they're the two teams that are now looking to bounce back and get into a better spot. PSG has a double header this week. Flipside does not. I can't. Who else has it? Uh, Weedham Girls has a double header as well. So this one's tough. Flipside hasn't looked like Flipside in a really long time, which is sad because they looked really good before the World Championship, but uh, I just don't know. Uh, I'm going to go PSG here. I don't know why I keep I keep doing that. I keep hitting shift. Um, I just don't believe in flip side right now. I, you know, it's as simple as that. I just don't believe in flip side. So, simple as that. Next up, Weedham Girls versus Complexity. My most hype matchup of the week. We got Greasy coming uh, over from a Weedham Girl sub. Who Remco chose Devo over Greasy and then dropped Devo to join Complexity. Complexity kicks Metsonaris. He goes to Weedham Girls. This is a rivalry matchup. This is a redemption matchup, a revenge matchup, whatever you want to call it. Both sides have a little revenge, so we'll see who wins it. Uh, it should be really close. I think uh, both these teams got a big win last week. Like Another win here will be huge for them. Huge for them to set up for a potential top two spot, and uh, at least a top six spot. So... Weedham Girls looked better to me last week. I felt like they were cleanly rotating. It's weird. Super weird because Complexity, they kick Mets because they want to do more of like a triple rotation, more of an offensive approach. 
And then all they did was play defense in their series versus PSG. That's literally all it was. Um, weed them girls. On the other hand, I thought they were picking up Mets to, like, let them play in the backfield. Let Remco and Ignite kind of uh, dictate the offense. Maybe a little bit more of the old complexity style. Maybe a little bit. But complete opposite. They were, like, m rotating a lot more. M moving up on the offensive end. Uh, and Mets and Aura is putting up some numbers as well. Offensive numbers, which is pretty cool to see i think i'm, I'm gonna ride with weenum girls here i'm gonna ride with the spin topper uh or propeller topper i guess you call it i got mets here mets has been looking good and if their offense keeps up weenum girls i think uh complexity will have to find a different alternative i think it's gonna be very difficult to score on complexity but it's not easy to score on weenum girls either i don't know i think mets norris looked good last week i think weenum girls is feeling it like i ignite maybe a, two weeks ago was like oh god i can't i can't play this game anymore i'm so uh, demotivated everyone's passing me in skill and then two days later he's like oh i'm ready i'm hyped and that seems to be every single pro at this point where they're just like there's down periods and up periods i think right now is an up period for women girls let's see how long they can ride it out again giblet no picks we'll just fill in all of these while we have here because giblet just did not want anything he wants to go one and oh this week that's what giblet wants he was very upset about his last week's performance so he wants to go one and oh next up Mouse Sports versus Stig. Normally, th this would be the least hype matchup, but Mouse Sports is 2-0. 2-0. Oh. Oh. Imagine if they beat Dignitas. I'm still waiting for the two losses for Dignitas. I'm still calling out the European region. You beat them twice in league play, and then whoever plays them in the regional championship, you knock them out. That's your best shot to get rid of Dignitas, to not let them win the world championship, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. They dismantled Fnatic. Easily Fnatic. It was very, very easy turbo great assists and also just like the simple plays where it's like hey i'm gonna tap it around the corner a little bit and then i'm just gonna go for a demo and when they try and clear from the corner i have kate up and Von panda doing a pass and play to a shot and it seems to work like every time for them so we'll see if mouse sports can figure that out and like get better clears i feel like they were a little shaky on their defense at times but they like at the end of the day made the saves that, that they needed to make i think it was also a little bit fanatic and vitality playing down just a bit. Their shots were relatively weak across the board. So we don't expect that from Dig and Test. I think Dig wins this easily. But what if Mouse Sports wins? Or what if they even take two games? Every single game matters for them now because they have two wins. They're likely at least tied for six spot here. And every single win matters for game differential for tiebreakers. And obviously, like they can still win more games, but if you take a game or two off digging test, a lot of like a lot of teams probably won't even do that. So you'll get a huge advantage on whoever you're tied with if you get tied in the sixth spot. So Mouse Sports is looking for one, possibly two games. Obviously, like if they get the win, they're looking fantastic. They basically clinch a playoff berth and they clinch the next season of RLCS. And that they're looking great for a top two spot. So uh, Mouse Sports, lots to play for, but it's still digging toss, and they're still the Kings. And uh, not I'm not going to bet against them until they lose at this point. Fnatic versus Vitality. This is my least hyped matchup of the week. Two teams coming in that are just not feeling it right now. Fnatic looks like last season's Fnatic. Not really doing anything. Mummy hasn't really done anything. Maestro's been very down as well. Like, literally nothing going right for Fnatic right now. Their shot quality is abysmal. And just like, it looks bad. I think Fnatic can bounce back. At the same time, Vitality. Fairy Peak, what happened? Like, this is, I think, only the third time he's been held scoreless in a series. And uh, it wasn't great for him. He got some assists, but he didn't get a lot of opportunities like I thought he would. Like, I thought his shot total would go up with Scrub. Like, I thought Scrub's wall dribble play was decent. He would beat some players out, but there was never any one ready for a pass or ready for the cleanup after a 50-50. I'm actually probably going to analyze next week Scrub Killer's wall dribble success rate. Uh, just because I see it so often in these games where he'll take it up the wall and all he's trying to do is beat one at least and maybe force a good 50-50 on the offensive side and see where the ball spills out to. It's just those 50-50s I feel like haven't really gone anywhere or those plays haven't amounted to much. Uh, so I might actually break it down by numbers next week if I have time. But Vitality needs this win. Fnatic needs this win. But I got Vitality here. I think they bounce back. But I think Scrub still played pretty decent. If Fairy plays a little bit better, um, they should win this. I think they could have uh, beat Mouse Sports if they were just slightly better. And uh, I think Vitality will grow into the season. 
I still think Vitality probably it could potentially be the second best team in Europe. It's very hard to call anyone at second best in Europe because it's always so close. And Vitality might have overperformed last season. Actually, I'm going to say whoever comes in second every single season in Europe overperforms because it's such a tight race. It's always a tight race, so you're always going to overperform there. Um, I got Vitality. I think uh, they'll take the series, and uh, Fnatic will have to bounce back. Like they'll have to bounce back somehow. They'll be 0 and 3. Uh, after this and it's not looking good next up Weedem girls versus psg this is my fourth most hyped matchup or fourth least i guess so not hugely hyped compared to some of the other games but Weedem girls versus psg it's it depends on the games earlier and this game could get a lot more hype if psg and Weedem girls both win this is super hype and that's who i have uh, going for it right there so psg would be one and one Weedem girls would be two and oh and Weedem girls would be looking great if they can win again uh, like this is another one of those games where it's like you have to beat these teams in the middle of the pack to have a chance at like just clinching a world championship spot and everyone in Europe wants to clinch a world championship spot in North America I feel like if you're the third seed generally you're playing a relatively weak six seed and you're not too worried about it in Europe you just never know you never know on the day if you're going to be able to beat a six seed so very important game but I have it a little bit less hype just because some of the other matches that are playing on the weekend. But I'm going to go Weenum Girls here. I don't know why. I like Weenum Girls. I liked them last year. And it did me pretty well. <coughs> and I like them again this year so far. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what Fruity can do. I feel like Fruity last week was like, yeah, he played. He was like, all right. Like all of PC was like, all right. Like Shawset really didn't do a lot. Like, I want to see what Shawset does. I think Shawset is the key for PSG in both these matchups. He needs to step up. He's one of the best players in the world at times. And I just want to see what creative stuff he can do with the ball when he's got it by himself. We didn't really see any of that last week. Um, so I want to see what Shawset does. So those are my picks. And that's it, guys. That's it for the video. I will have a little bit bonus Giblet stuff. Because Giblet has some words to say to himself, I guess. Because he was looking at himself in the camera. But that'll do it for me. Make sure you vote on the Twitter polls who you think is going to win every single game and keep beating me in the stand-ins. Here are the stand-ins once again. And, uh, yeah, should be a great RLCS weekend. Very hype games, very important games. We're going into almost the halfway point of the season. Next week, week number three, will be the halfway point. Very exciting. And next week starts six game weeks. So none of this five-game business anymore. Should be a lot of fun. And I'm really excited to just see who, like, who surprises this week. Last week was Mouse Sports. See if anyone can surprise. Maybe Fnatic. Who knows? Maybe FlyQuest. Who knows? Who knows? So that'll do it for me. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time. Ryan. Who wins? Ah! Who wins? Who wins? Energy or Allegiance? Which one? Well, which one? Yeah. Who wins, Ryan? Ryan, which one? Energy or Allegiance? See on the camera? Which one? Who wins? Hello. Wow. Say hi. All right, Ryan. Pick one. You got to pick one. People are waiting. Waiting to see what you pick. <laughs> Ryan, who are you picking? Who, who are you picking? Is that you? Is that you in the camera? Okay, 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 we're done.